A regular on 24 Hours Nothing But Net is the head coach at the University of South Carolina, Shane Beamer. Coach, it's so good to see you. Thanks for being with us once again. Always, uh, always enjoy it. Uh, honored that you asked uh, again. Hope you're doing well also. Yeah, everything's good. We're cranking up, man. We're just getting ready. Year six, uh, we're set to cross a million dollars. It seems like it's something I never thought I'd say or even thought of, but yeah. it's so powerful, uh, the amount of people that have helped and have gotten involved like yourself to make a, diff a difference, particularly in the state of South Carolina. Yeah, no question. It's an amazing cause, and it's a great testament to, to you and how people feel about you as well, that you're able to uh, generate uh, the attention on this and, and rightfully so. So much respect to you also for all you do. Well, thank you. You know, we're, we're doing it for the right reasons. It can be uh, taxing at times. Uh, it's definitely a physical, mental, emotional toll on me, especially when we get to the last hour, but uh, it's yeah. all worth it. All the training, everything and sacrifice that goes into getting ready. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, your football team for a minute, because once again, expectations high. There's so many exciting things that have happened. You've done a great job in the portal. Uh, schedule's out. We're ready to roll, right? I don't know if we're ready to roll. <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, no, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, obviously, the season record-wise last year didn't finish the way that we wanted, but it's one of those things. We went through a lot of adversity with injuries and youth, and we're better for it now. You know, there's no question our program's in a better place than what it was a year ago. We have a lot of uh, a lot of returning players that are coming back, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, so we're very experienced there. Uh, I think we got, we're got we really talented on offense. We just have a lot of new faces all across the board yeah. offensively. But got a really good group of guys that are very hungry, you know, to, uh, uh, to, to, to be better than what we were last year. Their work ethic since January has been fantastic. And got to have a big summer here coming up when they get back for summer school in a couple of weeks. But we got some really good people in our program and excited to, to see them come along. And that'll be the key for us, particularly on offense this year, just how quickly we can – we can gel with all the new faces that we're going to have. That's the key, right? How quickly you can come together. And that's why the summer is so important, especially in this landscape with all the transfers and the portal and people coming and going. Um, I always find it so amazing football coaches and how organized they are and how much you have on your plate at one time. When you're trying to break it down, Shane, what are a couple of things you want to have happen this summer with your new group? Yeah, you just nailed it, you know, with the portal, it's so unique in college athletics now, obviously, but college football, you know, here in the in the middle of May, as we are right now, this is the first time that I truly knew, okay, here's who exactly is going to be on the football team this yeah. upcoming season. And that's crazy. crazy. We've been through the weight room in January and February. We've been through spring practice in March and April. But then we have a transfer portal window that closed on April 30th. And we, you know, we lost a couple guys and we added some people. So literally middle of May is when you say, OK, here's who our team's going to be. Um, so that's a challenge, which makes the summer. Summers have always been important. But to me, more than ever, just because you have to come together as a team quicker than ever. And uh, that'll be one key this summer is just how quickly we can come together as a team. And uh, and become even more connected than what we are right now with some new people that have joined us, some freshmen that will get here in the summertime. Uh, so that's one thing. And then just really just trying to develop that chemistry, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. We'll have a new quarterback. We'll have a lot of new receivers. We'll have brand new running backs. And and um, those guys just got to click into what gel as quick as possible and and get ready for any other thing. The summer is really important for us because. You know, we open up with Old Dominion, which they won eight or nine games last season and had a really good year. But then we're at Kentucky week two uh, and then come right back home with uh, LSU week three. So we, we jump right into it. There's no easing into the season. So we have to have a great summer and be ready to go when we kick it off game one. Man, my, my heart is pounding for you just thinking about the pace that, <laughs> that you're on right now. Um, the summer has always been important, like you said. Um, in the landscape of college sports right now, especially in the SEC, there's so much power and money in that league and football drives all of it. And when you're watching uh, the schedule of things for yourself and your own quality of life, like, how do you do it, man? I, I don't even know how you guys can maintain a, a normal sense of, uh, of quality life with all the things coming at you at once, especially in that league. 
Yeah, no, it's a, it's a challenge and, and uh, everything that all of us are going through right now, there's no roadmap for it. I can't call my dad and ask him, hey, when you were coaching yeah. at the Citadel in 1978, how did you handle the portal at NIL back then or at Murray State or Virginia Tech? So it's something that we're all navigating. And then, you know, for me, it's just trying to have have that balance and, and uh, you know, plan accordingly so I can, if my kids have – events that I need to be at. I can get it on my calendar early enough and I can plan around that and, and schedule events around it and things like that also. And and it's always been the case, you know, the recruiting aspect of the game, that never stops. So even if you're off and you're on, you know, vacation or whatnot, you're still on the phone texting and talking and things like that. But the thing that I try and do as a dad is just, you know, be present uh, when I'm at home, be at home and be present. And, and uh uh, but then also you've really just got to be able to be structured and be organized because there is so much from if you're a college coach nowadays in any sport, you know, you've got you're trying to be a good husband, you're trying to be a good father, you ha you're dealing with your own team, you're recruiting, there's the transfer portal, there's fundraising, there's NIL, there's just a lot of different uh, balls that I constantly have in the air, but, you know, got to make sure that uh, I do a good job of, of being able to just step away and decompress uh, a little bit at times too. Have you come up with a, any sort of moniker or anything for what you call your style of play? I mean, your dad had Beamer ball, right? Uh, and it was such yeah. a very defining uh, way of playing. And you play in, in this league where you, you can't, I mean, you cannot have one possession of one mistake. It seems like the pressure cooker is so large in yeah. this on scale, you know, with what you do. Is there anything that you've come up with or any, anything you're trying to look for doing? Not really. I think a lot of people have kind of given us that Beamer ball moniker, which I'm all for, you know, um, you know, if it means if it means the same thing it did at Virginia Tech. And I'm all for, it. you know, an aggressive attacking style of play that in my, my, my dad's mindset was no matter who's on the field, you've got the ability to score, whether it's your defense creating a turnover that they take it back for a touchdown or it's special teams blocking a kick or returning a kick. Uh, they have the ability to score when they're on the field. To me, that's what Beamer ball is. And we certainly want to be that way. And, and um, we have been. I mean, we've scored in multiple defensive touchdowns in my three seasons as the head coach. We've scored multiple special teams touchdowns as well. So we want to continue to do that. Absolutely. And then just, uh, you know, an unbelievable uh, just playing with unbelievable effort when we're out there on the field, you know, that there's no question ever. We may not play well all the time or coach well all the time, but you can never question just how hard our guys play. And that's really important to me and something that we talk about all the time and, and just always competing, competing in everything that we do and, and uh, playing really, really hard. And if you do that, you know, I'm convinced good things will happen. I'm all about offense. So any way you can score anyway, it doesn't matter. As long as we're putting the ball across the line, that's good. That's good with me. Uh, no doubt. A lot of people forget because Frankie went to Clemson that I did pay five years of tuition at South Carolina. So we do have one of those flags, you know, that's split down the middle with yeah. it's represented. Um, I want to ask you about sport in general and being a good teammate. Cause I think sometimes in the landscape of what we do, I know with special Olympics, that's exactly, one of the attributes that you want the Special Olympic athletes to learn, and that is be a good teammate. You can compete and you can give your best. You can do everything you can. And that's why we're raising money so they can compete and train and organize. What would you say about being a good teammate at the University of South Carolina? That would be the exactly same thing about being a good teammate if you were playing any sport. No question um, that how critical it is that, you know, the best um you know, the, when you talk about individual awards and stuff, you typically see the, the in college pros, you don't see a lot of individual award winners that come off bad teams. And uh, so, first of all, to be the very best team you can be, um, that's going to help the individual. And, and we talk about it in our program all the time. There's a sign outside our team meeting room that says, what I do affects you. And that's personal, you know, accountability and everything that I do as the head coach affects everyone in our program and everything that our quarterback does, whatever our linebacker does, all that individual, that personal accountability, their individual behavior and actions affects the entire team. So uh, that's another way of saying it in my mind about being a great teammate. And then just to me, 
you know, you can have win football games and you can have the individual awards and all that as well. But at the end of the day, having the uh, respect of your peers, having the respect of your teammates is, is the most important thing. And, um, and pouring into one another for sure, whether it's coach to coach or coach to player, just being a great teammate um, in it for the team and here for the right reasons. And that's what we try and do here at Carolina in recruiting and bringing people into our program that, that are about that, you know, and, and they sure they have personal goals, but more important to them is the, the, the team and, and how they can make that better without a doubt. So being a great teammate is so critical and, and more important than ever, whether, whether it be college athletics, youth sports, uh, pro sports, whatever it may be. Are you on schedule? Do you feel good about where you are? I mean, you, you've taken this job before the portal really blew up and changed and, and NIL became a thing, right? Um, yeah. how, do you feel like you're on, on schedule with where you want to go with your vision and your timeline and the things that you know that you can accomplish? I, I do. I really do. Um, you know, if you look at the you know preseason projections, the first two years we overachieved. And if you look at the preseason projections last year, by the way, the record finished, we underachieved. And uh, I don't necessarily look at it that way. I mean, every year I look at it, did we get the most out of that team? And, and I don't think we did last season. And that starts with me as the head coach. So we certainly need to be better this year. But when you go through some of the adversity we dealt with last season, having as many season ending injuries as we had, we had 12 season ending injuries to key players. And we started five true freshmen. And that's hard. But I believe that, you know, when you go through some uncomfortable moments, if you've got a great spirit about you, that leads to great growth. And um, I said at the beginning of this call, this uh, talk here that uh, we've made we're a better we're in better position than what we were last year at this time because some of the ad, of the adversity we faced last season. But I really do. I, I, we've made some staff changes on the coaching staff and we're in a great place from a coaching staff standpoint, our recruiting each year that I've been the head coach has improved each year from, you know, my first season, the second season, the third season, now going into the fourth season. So we've got some really good young talent on the team. We've got some really good people in the, on the, in, in our program. We just, you know, we just, uh, the final grades for the spring semester came out and we just had the third highest GPA in the history of the football program at South Carolina. Awesome. And, and yes. And we've had in the last, uh, last five semesters, we've had two of the highest GPAs ever in the history of the football team. So we're doing some good things off the field. We're bringing in great people into our program. And it's obviously, it's a, it's a different animal in this league that we're in, but as a competitor, you love that. But I love, still love what I'm doing and love who I'm doing it with. I'm really excited about the future of, of Carolina football with the people that I have around me. Well, I, I only know you to be excited and ambitious. And I, I think those are two combinations that if any head coach can say, if people can say that about them, those are, those are definitely compliments at the highest level. Uh, just one final thing, Shane, and that is, you know, Williams Bryce is incredible. That place is on fire and everybody who ever goes to a game knows how exciting it is. The whole environment, even before the game, the tailgating, everything that goes with the pageantry of college football. And, and you guys are set to make some expanded plans around the stadium and really grow from an economic standpoint, what will that mean to you and your program when the the ability to stay a little bit longer, come a little bit earlier and hang out a little bit more post game around the arena and stadium is going to mean for you guys? Yeah, I know it's huge to be able to just, you know, not just for game days, but to be able to continue to, you know, showcase the city of Columbia, the state of South Carolina, without a doubt. And, and, uh, you know, I don't take for granted our, you know, we have 80,000 people in our stadium every single Saturday. I don't take for granted that they pay their or spend their hard earned money to come spend a Saturday watching us play college football. And uh, any way that we can continue to enhance that experience for our amazing fans, I'm all for it's great for them. It's great for our community. It's uh, great for recruiting. You know, when we have high school prospects on our campus um, that, that they get to they get to see what it's like in williams Bryce Stadium. So it's the name of the game. It's so much easier nowadays to just turn on television and, and watch the game on TV and listen to talented broadcasters like yourself. But it's, 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 uh, it's harder to get people to come sit in the stands now. So we always want to improve and make their experience great and being able to continue to enhance everything around williams Bryce uh, certainly will, will allow that to happen.
Well, I thank you for your time. You're a first class ambassador, not just for the University of South Carolina, but for the state of South Carolina and college football in general. And uh, we love calling it Beamer Ball, if that's what you want to call it. We're good with that, too. Thank you for being with us, Shane. Really appreciate no. it. Shane Beamer, the head coach at the University of South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate all you do.